for those of you who are subscribers, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for hanging out with me. We crossed 20K not too long ago. It's super, super humble and super exciting. And uh, if you are new to the channel, then welcome. Thank you so much for sharing a little bit of your time. Now, before we start talking and Q&A and doing a lot more stuff, uh, I want to do some housekeeping uh, stuff. I just uploaded two new videos, one with the DJI Osmo Pocket on my first attempt of uh, riding a Super 73 bike. I always wanted one of these and it was super cool. So shout out to Super 73 and my friend uh, Taylor. They invited me over and and uh, I, I did a test uh, ride over there and it was so much fun. I figured, hey, let me go ahead and do a little quick capture of, of you know how this experience went. And then at the same time I felt, hey, why don't we try to do a little stabilization test and see how the Osmo Pocket can handle those type of situations. Now, the whole video is just me riding the bike, one hand on on the on the pretty much on the handlebar, and then the Osmo Pocket on the other one. So I do not recommend you to do this because um, at the very very end of the video, I almost uh, fell. Because it's kind of weird. You're holding right, and and you're in a bike, and in your mind you're in a bike, but you're throttle throttle lane. But then at the same time, you can pedal, and it goes. So I don't know. I guess some coordination malfunction there. Uh, uh, mess me up so yeah check those videos out after the stream uh, if you don't mind giving them a look and if you enjoy them or you have any feedback or recommendations drop them in the comment section I also uploaded a video with Polar Pro uh, and the DJI Osmo Pocket which is awesome I'm gonna I have them here with me if you have any questions about that we can definitely dive in a little bit more and then of course we have some Sandmark videos that I dropped last week, uh, including the wide angle lens and the telephoto lens. Um, so any type of questions, any type of Q and A, this is the chance. Um, it's been a while, so yeah, <laughs> it's been a while. Oh, uh, and before I proceed, I'm going to E3 again this year. So Overlord, welcome back, welcome back. Good to see your name pop over here. I'm going to E3 this year once again, and I believe I might be going to Vegas once again to NAB. Yes, NAB in April, so far. Overlord, how's everything going? Uh, Beckers, uh, Dennis, Mr. Anthony, what's going on? Frederick, Armand, thank you so much. Just bought the Moment Anamorphic. Hopefully, I, hopefully it will look great with Pixel 3. Uh, on the Osmo Mobile 2. So, talking about the anamorphic lens, I have it right here. So congratulations, uh, Mr. Anthony. I honestly love the anamorphic look. Uh, sneak peek, I actually filmed a music video with uh, the anamorphic lens uh, made by Moment. It's really cool, it pretty much compresses the image so then when, when you de-squeeze uh, 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 the video either on the Moment app or in uh, Filmic or in Premiere, you get the really cool letterboxing top and bottom, native letterboxing, but then also you get those sweet lens flares. So if you haven't seen it, I actually have a uh, a, a video coming up with Moza Mini Mini talking about you know the, uh, the anamorphic lens. Fantastic lens, really good quality. It opens up a little bit, so it's a little bit wider than usual, but does give you that sweet letterbox and so congratulations uh as soon as the video gets released i'll share it on my instagram um yeah what's going on gilberto saludos thank you for joining us leo thank you for coming alan damn i was considering the bees grip anamorphic now you guys are making me rethink to get the moment good thing i hadn't clicked buy on the card yet oh sorry hey what's going on um, I personally haven't tried the one that you mentioned, but honestly, the anamorphic uh, by moment, I don't have any complaints. It looks really good. Just a, a little advice. Uh, definitely keep everything within the grid. You know how when you're filming and filming, you can have your grid, your rule of thirds. Try to keep everything around the neighborhood, not, not quite the center, but on the edges, just like pretty much any wider lens, you'll start noticing a little bit of like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't call it tear, it's kind of like a minuscule stretch towards the sides. Uh, that's the only thing that I noticed on the anamorphic lens, but other than that, the quality is amazing. 
Uh, if you actually swing over my Instagram once the stream's over, of course, because I want you to stay with me hanging out here, um, I actually have some clips of the anamorphic lens uh, there as well, so you can check it out. And if you have any questions, feel free to DM me. Honestly, I, I've been trying to do my best to answer to all the comments on YouTube, but it's getting a little challenging. Um, so on Instagram, if you DM me there, it's probably going to be a lot easier because I can kind of like see the notification on my watch and, you know, it's a little bit more straightforward uh, than logging into uh, the YouTube app and kind of like sorting through all the comments and stuff like that. What it's a real comment, what's just, you know, some trolling and stuff like that. So sweet. Um, let's see what else we got over here. I'll follow on that inside. Just found you recently. Awesome. Mr. Anthony, thank you. Thank you for hanging out. Uh, thanks for the tip, Alan. Thank you for coming out. So one of the questions that I received uh, recently was uh, comparing moment lenses versus the Sandmark lenses. And I actually want to take this opportunity to engage a little bit into uh, uh, that conversation. And I have them both right here. I have the telephoto moment lens and then I have the wide. I always carry these guys with me. Just in case the opportunity uh, presents itself, I can play around with them. But let's talk about a little bit about the wide first. So the moment uh, wide lens uh, comes with a sweet, you know, cap on top, and it's hefty. I really enjoy the heftiness of the the moment lens. Uh, so as the uh, Sandmark wide angle, they're very very similar in terms of like size. They're not too different. The Sandmark being a little uh, wider, right? A little bit kind of like wider on the on the on the sides, but it's slightly slightly thinner. Having said that, the moment I feel that the moment's slightly heavier, just a little bit heavier, but it's the right amount of heft. Uh, they feel very very good. And if I take off the little rubber cap, uh, don't drop it. Don't drop it. I've already dropped these. Um, these guys are really really solid. No, I've heard a lot of really good feedback uh, about people that are using moment lenses. I personally love them. I think they're fantastic. But one piece of feedback that one of my buddies uh, shared with me, his name is, uh, his name is Carlos, is that he uh, doesn't really like that much the fact that the lenses are kind of like giving you that little wave. It's kind of like a kind of like a lens hood type of situation, which helps at times. But he was saying that he dropped his ones and that bent. And then everything kind of like started throwing him off, right? If it bends uh, towards the insides, because that's usually what it would do. It would show up in your footage or your photos. So you might need to do some cropping. But other than that, I don't have anything bad to say about Moment. They're fantastic. I really like them. Having said that, uh, Sandmark recently uh, shared with me their wide angle lens. And in a similar fashion, uh, it's very similar in terms of size, in terms of like the wide angle uh, view. But... Uh, it's perfectly flat, so my buddy saw them and was like, oh, I kind of dig that one. I wouldn't be surprised if, if it gets a bump, it, it could potentially bend similarly, but I, I don't really know if you can see it on the inside. It's got some threading because Sandmark sells on their website uh, filters, uh, ND filters and different polarizers that you can add uh, as well to your lenses, and it's a little bit easier. You don't need an adapter for the filter. It's kind of like a really cool... Uh, well thought system well for the moment you need an adapter so you can put the filter so like they have some different combos over here some uh, there are adapters you know for those type of filters uh, on their website but I believe there's like already a little bundle that you can get for this and it screws on straight into the lens all over here there's like this piece that goes over it and then you put the uh, the filters on them uh, and they mount relatively similar uh, both of them will need a case. Uh, for example, the Sandmark. I'm a fan of the Sandmark case because the Sandmark case um, has kind of like the threading. So you just simply screw this on, kind of like, kind of like that, right? And kind of like stays there. But I do appreciate the fact that you can put it on both. Moment cases are going to be the same exact deal, but they're going to be a little bit thicker, a little bit bulkier, which is both good. Uh, uh, because it protects uh, uh, the lens and of course it protects your phone. So the case is kind of like relatively thick, right? So you can pretty much twist it and lock it in place, but the case is gonna protect your phone a little bit more. It's a little bit more thicker. There's a lot more volume, 
which is great if you're walking around just going handheld. If you're using a gimbal, I personally prefer the thin, low-profile case by Sandmark because it'll literally fall perfectly on the gimbal grip, most grips, and you'll be able to use it. I personally prefer to use the Moza Mini Me uh, for these type of uh, lenses because the Mini Me has 300 grams of payload. I just thought I shared a little bit of that. Now, let's take a look and see what you guys have to say about that. Thanks uh, for the tips and tricks you share. I have been able to uh, use a lot of them with my Airsoft videos. Ooh, Rusty Airsoft, that's awesome. I need to check that out, Rusty Airsoft. I'm gonna, I'm gonna check that out. I'm gonna write it down here, Rusty Airsoft. Sweet, awesome. And then uh, uh, Voki's channel is saying, hey, what's up? What camera settings do you use for the DJI Osmo Pocket for night shots, exposure, etc. on my footage? Uh, was not so good. Greetings from Vienna. Hey, what's up, Voki? Um, honestly, for the DJI Osmo Pocket, most times, since I'm a run and gun type of filmmaker enthusiast, I don't even consider myself like a professional or anything like that. Um, honestly, I might go to auto nine times out of ten because I want the phone to default to what it thinks is best. But it, it all comes down to the situation. You definitely want to avoid cranking up your ISO. There's a dog barking around. Um, you definitely want to keep your ISO as uh, low as possible, but at the same time, you know, you're gonna have to compromise on your shutter speed or ISO. Um, it's tough. Uh, the situations that I've been able to film with the Pocket have been in uh, Universal Studios, for example. And it's kind of cool because the Osmo has a, a pretty decent range, not a whole lot of range, but what's bright will be kind of like uh, focused and exposed. Shadows, though, might be very, 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 very dark. So one tip, if you're filming on dim situations, I would recommend you to use the Cine-like uh, uh, color profile that they just recently updated because that's going to give you a little bit of a higher ceiling. Uh, things that are very, very dark might be a little bit flatter. So at the end of the day, when you bring that footage over to your editing software, you might be able to have a little bit more data. But definitely, I would say trial and error based on the situation. It's kind of difficult to tell you, oh, just pick the settings on the pro mode and you'll get there uh, because at the end of the day, it all comes down to what your focus is. I would default to auto and see what the phone, or in this case, the pocket fit, uh, picks, and then you kind of like dissect and tweak it uh, 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 based on what you want. So that's kind of like what I try to do because not all cameras, not all phones will pick up the same settings. They all have different range. So I would definitely uh, try to explore, go into auto, and see what the settings of the, uh, uh, what settings the Osmo picks, and then try to kind of like add a little bit more ISO, slow down the shutter speed, change a color profile, and kind of like try to get as close as you can to what your vision is. So hopefully that adds up a little bit of uh of value there. Uh, Voki, thank you for your question. I appreciate your time. Alan, so Samark isn't the Bionet style. Is it a thread? Um, if yes, how big is a thread? And yeah, that case is slim. Yeah, so the case is definitely very, very slim. As far as the threading, I'm gonna be honest with you, I have no clue out of the top of my mind, um, but I can check, I can check for you. I'm gonna take a little stroll to their side and see if they have any information with the threading because that's super huge, that's super important. Send Mark. In the meantime, um, I shot a couple photos and videos, so you definitely wanna make sure that, uh, if you want a little bit of my insight of what I think about the Send Mark and all that stuff, check out the two YouTube videos that I uploaded there. But let's see, I'm currently jumping in their site, and pretty much any lens that you get from them, whether it's a wide angle or the telephoto, both of them will, will have the threading. I just checked that out. Da, 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 da. It does not say exactly on the description, but let's see, technical parameters includes, it doesn't really say exactly what type of threading it is, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's just uh, kind of like a standard, uh, 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 you know, threading for their filters. Now I'm looking at their website right now, and on top of, seeing iPhone lenses, they have iPhone filters as well. They primarily focus uh, on those uh, uh, filters. But I'm looking over here, they they have cinema editions and 
you know, the type of, you know, ND filter. So they have an ND and PL filters, um, for example, that will give you that ND filter. It's kind of like a sunglass uh, uh, pair for your phone that brings your overall look down. So it, it gives you the ceiling to slow down your shutter speed and get a little bit more consistent cinematic uh, shutter speed. That way you can use your 180 rule if you follow it. If you don't, then you're just simply going to be able to play a little bit more with the with the shutter speed, but I would definitely encourage you to check out the Sandmark. I do not know if other third-party uh, ND filters or, or polarizers will work with it, but I do know that the ones that they sell on the website are really easy to screw on. So hopefully that helps out Alan. I agree with Voki, night shots are so tough. Yes, Rusty and uh, <laughs> Voki are right. Night shots are definitely one of the uh, my Achilles heels at, at this point. I often do a couple hacks, tips and tricks, and I do some overlaying on Final Cut, which is my uh, software uh, that I use for editing. I just add at times a little overlay, just kind of soften things up, but yeah, it's super tough. Um, Overlord, you got some stuff on your beard. Where? Where? Tell me, Overlord. I just took a shower. I highly doubt that, because I don't think I have anything on my beard. I think it's just the sun reflecting on <laughs> the longer hairs on my <laughs> on my mustache. Um, you you got it, Voki. Anytime. All right. Let's see what other questions you guys have. What would you be your top two or three editing software besides Adobe? Um, definitely Final Cut. I feel that if you're not using Adobe or uh, you know any of the other ones like i resolve for specific things or sony vegas is another good one i would say final cut i actually started my video editing journey first with a windows movie maker back in the day because it was free and it came in the computer and then i started using sony vegas because it remind it was really easy really really easy just to drag and drop things into your timeline add your effects add your filters transitions and then of course i started diving into a little bit more final cut but for those of you who have phone, like iPhones, for example, or, or Macs, things like iMovie are a fantastic uh, place to start for getting things done really quick. Um, there's another app that I'm actually looking into. Uh, it's called LumaFusion for iPhone and iPad. I believe it's also on Android. If not, uh, there are a couple similar ones. Uh, Adobe Premiere Rush is also another really good one. Um, so yeah, I would definitely take a look at those. Uh, but Final Cut is my, we it's my weapon of choice. It's easy, straight to the point. And the other day I was having this conversation with somebody asking me about uh, what are uh, uh, the differences between like Premiere, for example, and Final Cut and other similar uh, apps for video editing. And my analogy was like, well, both of them are great. Definitely uh, Premiere Pro is going to be way more robust. But think of, think of Final Cut... Like, let's say you were going to do pizza. You were going to make your own pizza. And you say, hey, I want to do pizza with Final Cut. And then Final Cut comes out and says, okay, well, here's your cheese. Here's your sauce. Here's your bread. Here's the oven. Knock yourself out. Premiere comes out and says, hey, if you want pizza, here's the flour so you can make your own dough. Here's the cow and the milk so you can make your own cheese. And here's the brick so you can make your own oven. So... It definitely has a lot more of a, of, a, of a repertoire of tools. It had a lot more tools, but personally for me, I found myself twisting so many knobs and getting lost and, ooh, what about this? What about that? That I personally wasn't really creating as much because I was trying to tweak. I was trying to tweak, trying to tweak. So if you're like me, I have some sort of attention disorder situation because I, when I'm editing here on my laptop, I have to have a movie playing and I need to get stuff done quick. If not, I kind of get bored. So if you're like me, probably Sony Vegas or Final Cut might be a lot more straightforward, straight to the point, but very powerful tools indeed. So that's why I would say, um, you know, between uh, 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 Final Cut, Premiere, Sony Vegas, uh, Luma Fusion on mobile, Adobe Premiere Rush, really good options as well. Can't seem to find it on their site either. Yeah, they don't have any information. Maybe we should send them an email. <laughs> Leo asks, I know this is a little out of the thematic uh, of the live stream, but I have a question about Filmic Pro. Have you used it in the Smooth 4? 
Do you know of the rumors about it getting Moza compatibility? Ooh, that's a great question, Leo. Um, Filmy Pro is amazing. If you are uh, a little bit more above uh, entry level, basic, and you're trying to do a lot more uh, of a filmmaker's approach to your video captures, Filmic Pro is the way to go. I know that Filmic Pro supports uh, native uh, connectivity with uh, the Osmo Mobile, and now they added uh, support for the Smooth 4. Um, it's actually right here. Um, I haven't personally used my Smooth 4 in a while. And one of those reasons is because their software was at the beginning, giving me a little bit of a, of a run for my money in terms of the tracking and some of the stabilization and stuff like that. So I personally haven't used a filmic integration. If it's close or uh, very, very similar to uh, DJI's support, then I honestly, that's, that's fantastic. I feel that that's a really good thing. Um, but having said that, just the practicality and the size of the Smooth 4 definitely made me look uh, for, for, for something else as far as what I need uh, to film. Having uh, uh, read recently a lot of feedback, a lot of comments about it, I'm thinking of giving it another go and kind of like do like a one year later, uh, five reasons why or, or another comparison or something like that. But it, I actually have two and very soon I'm going to give, give one away. So I have my Smooth 4, but then I have a second Smooth 4 that I have not touched. I opened the box just to see which color it was because I wanted to see if it was either black or white, but I'm gonna give it away because I'm not using it. So stay tuned for that. Follow me on Instagram if you wanna win it because it's gonna be on Instagram. It's gonna be a giveaway. This is a sneak peek for those of you who are in the live stream, uh, kind of like one of the benefits of, of hitting that bell. You're part of this, you get early info on, on what's gonna happen on the show. So definitely check out, follow me on Instagram and I'm gonna give away one of those soon. But uh, when I try it, I'll let you know, Leo, absolutely. DJ Derek B, you are the man. Oh, thank you so much, DJ, uh, DJ Derek. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. I appreciate it, thank you. Um, let's see, I got uh, Kita Sanders. How do you learn the manual controls on your phone for photos and videos on the Moment app? Um, that's a great question. And I'm gonna kind of like answer these a little bit more quicker because I'm seeing that we're starting to get a little pile of uh, comments and questions. Honestly, I learned photography a while back when I was living in Pennsylvania, a little bit more robust DSLR uh, uh, kind of learning, you know, the found fundamentals of photography. And then what I'm trying to do in this channel is just to bring that down and remove the complexity. But in reality, photography is just three things, right? Imagine you, you, you know, you have your bass, your guitar, and your, uh, your piano, right? And you're trying to make sure that one of them is not louder than the other. You're trying to make a harmony, right? So that's photography. You're just trying to make sure you're balancing the equation. And all the values uh, in photography, let's say you're shooting in the Moment app, uh, um, will add up to making sure you get enough light in your camera. So shutter speed, for example, will allow a certain amount of light into your camera. Aperture, the same exact thing. And ISO, it's kind of like a digital gain. It's kind of like a fake uh, uh, crank of, of volume, right? So if you're into music or, or into recording, right? Or something like that, gain just pretty much uh, uh, makes everything kind of like just, just louder, uh, but not real louder. It's just making everything just digitally louder. Um, ISO is that digital gain, but for video. So it just makes things brighter, but not real. You know, it's kind of like the camera trying to be a little bit more sensitive. Um, so, you know, it's, it's all about balance and shutter speed, ISO and aperture will also have their repercussions, right? They have side effects. So, oh, you shutter speed makes things brighter. Oh, ISO makes things brighter, right? Um, but at the end of the day, you got to make sure that you're not getting hit by the side effects of shutter speed, ISO, and all that stuff. So um, I've been contemplating talking a little bit about, about that uh, for those of you who are now getting towards uh, that kind of like pro setting step level. But I still, at the end of the day, just want to make things simple, right? Uh, there's nothing wrong with shooting photos or video in auto. Um, having said that, that balance of being able to control the shutter speed and the ISO on the phone's cases, because you, 
really don't have control of the aperture on most phones, uh, unless you're switching lenses, uh, will add up and will create a lot more cinematic approach. So um, stay tuned. I've been contemplating and doing kind of like a series. Uh, the challenge uh, for me has been always time. Uh, to this very day, I still work full time. Um, I pretty much come from work to work. And it's definitely becoming a little bit more challenging to, to focus uh, on what it is that I want this channel to be. Um, I am definitely working very, very hard to make uh, this my life. I want this to be the one thing that I do because I enjoy it so much. Um, so stay tuned. Some moves are being made to make sure that this channel is enough of a, an outlet for, for it to provide for me and my family uh, so I can continue to do this and have more time to do this. But yeah, uh, coming soon. Uh, I'm not 100% sure if it's going to be kind of like a, uh, like a Patreon thing. Uh, but 100% sure, whether you pay or not, it's going to be eventually free on YouTube because I don't believe in holding things behind a paywall. Um, I do believe in early access. I do believe on, um, you know, just access in general for, for specific things ahead. But ultimately, I want to make sure that all my content becomes available for free on YouTube and Facebook as well. Those are my two outlets. Uh, that, I've, that I've been focusing a lot. So rest assured, I'm thinking about doing a series like from the very beginning, how do I plan for my videos? How do I film them? How do I edit them? And, and of course, breaking down all that shutter speed ISO stuff. Uh, but yeah, coming soon, hopefully 2019 is gonna be that year where I just pretty much detach from the regular world and just become 100% content creator, YouTube stuff and and, I'm 100% sure that with your help, I'll, I'll be able to make it because we've only been doing this for a solid year and we're growing and this community kind of like becoming its own little thing. I see, I recognize the same people over and over. So I want to thank you for that. But yeah, more information on pro stuff coming soon, I promise. All right, let me see if I can catch up. That was a little bit, <laughs> that was a little bit longer, uh, but uh, definitely uh, needed to say. But uh, let's see. Can you do another cinematic video on the Smooth Gimbal? Absolutely. I'm actually, for those of you who haven't seen, uh, I don't know if you've noticed, and I gotta, I gotta definitely share this uh, now that I have some of you on the channel and, of course, some of you listening on podcasts after the fact, uh, which, by the way, if you didn't know, I have a podcast. The audio version of most of these videos, I convert over to audio uh, 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 only on podcast services, uh, YouTube, uh, um, sorry, <laughs> YouTube, uh, uh, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, everywhere, uh, Overcast. Um, but I've been doing a lot of vlogs for Smooth on their channel. They are sponsoring uh, Smooth Vlog. I have a playlist on my YouTube channel. So if you want to see a lot more cinematic stuff for Smooth, they became a sponsor a while ago. So uh, go ahead and check them out. Um, they, of course, haven't paid me for this, but I do like the Smooth Mobile. I truly love what it brings to the table on the gimbal world. So I definitely encourage you to check that out if you want to see more cinematic stuff for Smooth. That's why I've been separating what it's uh, Smooth from the channel because it's a sponsor thing versus non-sponsor. So I've been dropping everything that's uh, sponsored over there. So uh, da, 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 da. I was shining on the light. I don't know what it was though. Okay, cool. <laughs> Rusty, Windows Movie Maker. I'm gonna kind of like Scroll a little bit further down. Where a broke father will be following you on Instagram. <laughs> totally. Uh, giveaway, absolutely sweet giveaway. I'm staying tuned. This is Damon from Orlando. Wondering what you think about the poor excuse for a mic adapter. It sucks because you won't be able to put the pocket down flat and use it as a vlog camera. I'm sorry, I'm reading uh, because it's so far away and so small because you know, I'm trying to keep on frame over here. Um, but if I'm not mistaken, um, DHT Media is talking about the DJI Osmo Pocket. And the DJI Osmo Pocket, I saw at CES that DJI has the adapter, the mic adapter. I don't know if it's out yet. I'm going to have to take a look at that and reach out and see what's, what's going on over there. But an alternative to that, uh, uh, his, his concern is that if you put a microphone adapter underneath where the... Uh, USB-C port is on the DJI Osmo Pocket right underneath 
it's not gonna be able to lay flat, right? And that's super cool to be able to do. My answer to this would be the Polar Pro tripod mount. Which, by the way, on the previous video, I mounted backwards. <laughs> Some of you were pointing that out. Um, so yeah, amateur move. I tested it out, and ironically, when I realized that that was happening, um, I already put everything away and put all this stuff in my bag. Um, so yeah, <laughs> thanks for everyone who said, hey man, you put the tribal mount backwards. I'm like, yeah, I realized after the fact. But thank you for pointing it out. It's awesome because I, you guys keep me on my toes. But uh, this little thing over here will give you the option to slide your Osmo Pocket and then you'll be able to mount this on like a little tripod, but it does give you a little bit of extra give at the bottom. So if you have your tripod mount over here, you'll have the capability of kind of like moving this around so it kind of like lifts the uh, Osmo Pocket a little bit. I know um, it's not an answer to, but this might be kind of like a really cool thing where you could still keep the pocket in your pocket um, with uh, 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 the little tripod, maybe like one of the ones that I've always been using uh, for my gimbals, for example, one of these guys, right? So this might open up the door, depending on the adapter and the final form of the adapter that DJI shows up. This could be an additional uh, tool. Uh, some of the Polar Pro uh, filters and adapters that I've been using are on my Amazon list. So link should be in the description um, if you wanna check out all that fun stuff, all that gear. Uh, make sure you swing by and check it out. I'm actually editing the description of the video just so you guys can kind of like check that out and make sure you're you're taking you've been taken care of. That way everything uh, that we talk about here is referenced uh, down there. So and it should be published on the description. So we're going back again to the live streaming control. And there we go. Beautiful. All right, I'm going back at it again, just so we can see the stream. Bear with me for one second, but yeah. Um, Polar Pro makes some really good solutions as far as adapters that might support uh, that behavior. If you're trying to film, if you're trying to do something like that, then uh, you definitely wanna make sure you're taking a look at that. All right. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Do you do any services on music video editing? Uh, I'm gonna be honest with you, um, whatever whatever makes sense. Um, I do film videos, I do edit other videos, um, but I don't, I don't focus too much on it. The music video that I just filmed was a video that I filmed from a friend. Um, so definitely depends on the project because I film everything 100% on smartphones and or the Osmo Pocket. Uh, my goal is to just remove big rigs and big DSLRs from the equation. Uh, so 100%, I don't know if everyone would be, oh, you're gonna film this on a phone, right? I wanna make sure that I'm reflecting uh, the client's values and my values as well. Uh, and some people might see the phone and the little lenses and be like, wait, this is it? But I promise you, uh, uh, it's possible, you can do it, but I don't know that I wanna focus 100% on doing like stuff for other people. Uh, shoot me a DM uh, if you have any questions or any thoughts on that and you know, I'll, I'll take in consideration anything. I definitely I don't, I don't wanna uh, you know, dismiss anything, but um, I would be open to do stuff like that. So um, let's see, I can't wait to see you make a lot I'm doing st I live in doing stuff you love on YouTube. Thanks, Overlord. That's so nice of you, man. Hey, what's up? You're Sima from Australia. Thank you for tuning in. That's awesome. What's up from the 602? Alex Alvarez. Hello. Good to see you live and vlog. Rat Roman. What's up, Roman? What's up, Eddie? You thought about making a XR versus 10S camera comparison? Uh, they're the same camera, man. The wide angle lens on the 10R is the same wide angle lens on the 10S. Uh, the only major difference is going to be that portrait mode that you can do in just a wide angle, which is kind of cool. It's kind of cool. But in terms of like range and everything, it's virtually the same sensor. So I don't know if I want to like 
How do I do that? You know what I mean? <laughs> um, thanks for Anderson. Yes, you're spot on. Huge concern with that. Yep, totally. I want to use the pocket for travel, blogging, and I want to have a mic and also be able to uh, lay this flat. <sighs> that's gonna be the that's gonna be the challenge, DHT. It's gonna be the what monopod is that, please? With Lex that you just pulled out. Oh, uh, this is the Moza Mini Me. It's a gimbal. Um, but I was uh, alluding to the little tripods that you can leverage uh, on that uh, Polar Pro adapter, right? And if you were to use uh, the little tripod on the Polar Pro mounts, for example, you have a little bit of a gap underneath. So depending on the final shape of the, of the uh, microphone adapter for uh, the DJI Osmo Pocket, you might be able to get away with it. But we'll have to see what final shape. If it's going to be straight shape, I don't think it's going to work out unless you find a different bracket alternative. Uh, but definitely a concern. Another thing that you could do is just mount something on the sides over here because the Polar Pro has two mounts, which is really useful. But we'll have to wait and see. But yeah, this is the Moza Mini Me, and it comes uh, now with a little mini tripod over here. One of my favorite gimbals of all time because 300 grams payload wireless charging it's just beautiful and inception mode so yeah Moza mini me everything that i use links in the description so let's see what's up what's up what's up john says uh hey eddie i can't decide which camera to buy for travel the osmo pocket or the gopro hero 7 woohoo that is the question or maybe the snopa adam gimbal for my iphone 10r Ooh, you have a 10r that's awesome what would, you, uh, what would your recommendation be? What would I recommend? Oof, it all comes down, uh, John, to what are you traveling, uh, 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 what are you traveling for? Like, are you going on vacation to Disneyland? Are you going to the Rapids in Colorado? Or what is the end goal? If you're going to frequent a lot of outdoor activities, I would honestly say get the GoPro. It has amazing stabilization. I personally have played with it, but I don't own one. That's why I haven't made a video yet. Um, looking to make some changes and make sure <laughs> try to see if I can get one um, but uh, at the end of the day I would definitely recommend to get the one that you feel is gonna hit the spot for your activity let's say you're going to Spain or Italy on vacation no water sports no outdoor activities just walking through a city the Osmo pocket honestly it's probably gonna be the one that I would recommend because it is not demanding of your phone uh, so you can have your phone in your pocket, you'll have a phone, but then you can have that little thing that you can just start, stop, start, stop, putting in your pocket, put it in your, cho in your shoulder, and then just walk away. If you have a phone already though, or multiple devices like an iPhone or a Pixel or something like that, it's a tough one. It all comes down to the cinematic uh, 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 approach that you're taking. A Snopa, for example, which by the way I have right here, Snopa Atom, it folds just like that, very straightforward. It fits in a small shoulder bag or little satchel or whatever. Um, and you'll be able to get stuff done, but you gotta consider that you're gonna have to take your phone out, put it there all the time, film. If you get a text or phone call, you have to take it out, right? So it's not for everyone. Uh, it all comes down to what type of activity or what type of trip you're gonna be doing. I would say outdoor stuff, definitely get a GoPro. If not so much, you're gonna be doing some casual then I would definitely cycle between the Osmo Pocket or the Snopa Atom, if the Atom is the gimbal that you want it to take because it folds like this. Another gimbal that folds, that I don't wanna to talk too much about it because I personally haven't played with it other than CES, is gonna be the Moza Mini S. But Moza Mini, uh, uh, Snopa Atom came first with the folding situation, um, and this is it. So you know, just to put it in perspective, this is the case for the Osmo Pocket and this is uh, by Polar Pro, by the way, not the one that comes with it, and this is the size. So it's not too big. So you could have a Polar Pro case with the Osmo Pocket in it, or the one that comes with the Osmo Pocket, it's even smaller, but this one allows you to have both adapters, maybe a lens or a filter or a wireless backpack, um, and of course you can have a little, little pouch for filters if you were to need some. Um, this definitely became my go-to. I used to carry only the DJI Osmo Pocket, you know, little uh, carry case that it comes with. But then I switched to this one because I can fit more stuff. 
and that way it's not just dancing around my backpack. So uh, definitely a tough one, but I would cycle between outdoor stuff, GoPro 100% or uh, Osmo Pocket if you're going to be just walking around doing, you know, basic stuff. So that's uh, what I would say. Do -do 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 -do. Let's see what, it, uh, what Alan says over here. From one broke father to another, you have no issue making this your life. Thank you so much. That's awesome. If any, uh, can, if anyone can, you can. You've inspired me to make the movie I've been thinking for years with my phone. Just never stop. Thank you so much, Alan, man. That means the world. That means so much. At times, uh, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I was uh, a victim of my own device. Uh, and demise. Um, I got a little bit burned out recently. I'm not gonna lie. I I got stressed. I started getting anxiety attacks because I was just so focused on creating content that I personally lost a little bit of, of sight of what was important. So I reeled it back and I slowed down a little bit. I started it taking a little bit more time just to cycle and sort through what truly would make uh, an impact for you for the audience of this channel and and you know I was starting to get caught up on views follows and things I just say you know what I'm just gonna do whatever makes me happy and whatever brings you value so that's what it's all about Alan I'm glad that the videos on the channel is making uh, uh, an impact in your life and that is just the best the best feeling in the world just to feel empowered um, you're empowering me because that gives me a lot of warms and fuzzies Alan so thank you so much and whenever you upload your movie, send me a link. Um, I'll subscribe and I'll check it out, please. Have you done any filming with the S9 Plus Abby 219? Abby, I have not. I have done videos with the iPhone, uh, the Galaxy S8 Plus, which is somewhere here. Oh, it's right here. And I even had a moment case on it. But something happened. Another sneak peek for... Uh, the audience of the live stream, I went ahead and got the S10 Plus. So that should be coming soon, and I'm gonna be able to make uh, different comparison videos. What is the quality of the Osmo uh, with that phone or the others uh, that I have right now? So stay tuned, I'm gonna be doing content on the S10 Plus in the coming weeks. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Um, but yeah, I kinda like skipped the nine because I got the eight relatively close to that. But I feel that there's a fundamental change in the way that the phone is made now. So I want to see what that looks like. All right. DHT, perfect. Thanks. Uh, sorry for all the messages. It's supposed to be an adapter that sticks on about three. Yeah, if it's if the adapter strikes about three, uh, uh, three quarters of an inch, then I don't know if it's going to work out with the solution that I, that I presented. Ooh, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. Maybe their tripod, their selfie stick type of situation. We might be able to create something. Who knows? We'll see. We'll see what's up. Moxin, I am planning on shooting a music video at Santa Monica using an iPhone 10s Max and Osmo Mobile 2. What angles and video editor should I use? Ooh, Moxin, congratulations on your video uh, shoot. That's awesome. Santa Monica, it's one of my favorite spots in, uh, in Southern California to shoot. Um, so I would definitely recommend, ooh, I would definitely recommend a, a, a combination of slider shots and jib shots. The cool thing about Santa Monica is that it, it's, it's such an iconic place and people who are not from uh, Southern California might not be uh, uh, as used to seeing it. So when you use reveal shots like jib shots, crane shots, or slider shots, with the pier in the background and with the lifestyle and everything going on, you'll definitely be able to bring in people into that experience. So definitely reveal shots using jib shots, right? So if you have uh, the Osmo, uh, make sure you have uh, the tilt lock. Uh, so that way it stays uh, locked. Doesn't matter if you go up or down and just kind of like reveal your subject and uh, showcase the fact that you have Santa Monica pier or just the, the lifestyle of the environment. Uh, definitely some of the slider shots. I love to do steps in Santa Monica and things like that or showcasing movement. Um, so if you're filming uh, your artist and they're dancing, make sure they're moving kind of like kind of like a parallax effect where the subject's moving, but then the background's like behind them and you can showcase the overall vibe of the place. 
So definitely focus on jibs, sliders, um, and then since you have the Osmo Pocket, uh, the DJI Osmo Mobile 2, believe it or not, I would definitely encourage you to do some hyperlapses. Time lapse while tracking the wheel, for example, or time lapse uh, tracking your subject and moving around them so you can create some really cool dramatic effects. Um, I would, however, encourage you to go a day before or after to grab as much B-roll as you can because at the day of shooting, you want to focus on the artist. You want to focus on what you need to do. And if you start B-roll, uh, if you if you start capturing B-roll, or if you start experimenting, it might take you a longer time. That's something that I've uh, struggled with in the past. So make sure you capture what you're meant to capture. And then any B-roll that does not require the artist to be there, go the day before, go the day after, and just, you know, nobody's going to know. <laughs> Sweet. Let's see. Abby, forgot to say hello from the Netherlands, Abby. Netherlands, man, I wanna visit, I wanna visit Netherlands. Thank you so much for tuning in, Abby, I appreciate it. Can Osmo Pocket take pictures like a normal camera? Uh, Surya Andy, I'm sorry if I'm messing up your name. Yes, it can. You can just go to the photo mode and take regular photos, but it does give you manual controls too. So you can uh, pretty much change your shutter speed, your ISO, all that good stuff. Uh, just like the Osmo uh, can with the Osmo app or just like your phone can. Hey, Koki Films, what's up, what's up? Welcome, welcome back. New subscriber, by the way, Moxine, thank you so much, man. I appreciate that. It makes a huge difference for the channel. And it also makes uh, me justify this uh, with my mom and my wife and say, hey, you see, some people care. <laughs> so it's not only that I'm just making videos here, just kind of wasting my time. So, you know, people are getting benefits out of this. So thank you so much. Uh, if you enjoy the content, give it a thumb, give it a sub. I appreciate that very much, very much. Uh, El Kiki Films, what's that link? Let me know what you got in that link. Um, DHT Media, Moxon, you can't go wrong with his videos. Uh, does uh, a hell of a job. It's very informative, also entertaining. Thank you so much, DHT. I appreciate it. If that was meant for me. <laughs> Thank you. EMT, the director, Overlord. Hey, man, uh, I don't want to say that I'm a director, but I've done some music video direction. I'm about to release one soon via the artist profile. And it's always an awesome experience because you can never foresee what type of challenges and hurdles you're going to uh, uh, face when you're out filming a music video. You can do as much planning as you can, but it's just so um, cool to be able to overcome those challenges on location. Whether you're filming a music video or whether you're filming videos for your family or vacation, um, I am, I get a kick out of just going over those challenges. Um, so if you, if, if this is an advice for anybody trying to start making videos, whether you're trying to do YouTube, whether you're trying to just do family stuff, just take it slow and don't get discouraged every time something's not going the way you envisioned it. Because that's the beauty of this. That's the beauty of just being able to grab your phone or the Osmo Pocket or whatever it is that you have to capture a video and then just go around and just to overcome that obstacle. Because at the end of the day, not everybody has that willpower. Not everybody has the, the ability to just find a solution. And the more you practice, the more uh, of a tool set you'll develop and you'll recognize, ooh, I know that I'm gonna be you know encouraged uh, and counting uh, encountering a lot of these challenges. I know that it's going to rain. I know that it's going to be harsh light. I know that I'm going to need a filter. And, you know, you'll start creating your style yourself. I don't know. I love it. I love it. And hopefully all of you can make your own movies and make your own videos and just overall just create, which is the whole concept of this channel. So um, <clears throat> link for Los Cabos trip this past weekend with uh, Pocket and Air. You know what? Let's go ahead and show that. Absolutely. Anybody that wants to check out that link, I went ahead and make it made it public. Cookie Films a little bit uh, further back in the in the chat. They uploaded a, a video, so you can check it out after the fact. Anything you put your mind to, you can do it. Absolutely. But this is one thing, guys. You can definitely do whatever you set your mind to do. The challenge here is perseverance, consistency, and willpower. Um, Anybody can do whatever they want in life, but not everybody has the willpower to put in the work and to go that extra step that it requires. Um, critique yourself, let others critique your work, take it, take it as a learning experience, even if it hurts. Um, I've taken my fair share of criticism every single day in the comment section. 
Um, but don't forget that if it was easy, pretty much it wouldn't be a thing, right? Everybody could do it and pretty much you would just shift your focus to something else. So whether you're trying to do videos on the internet or just uh, travel or gaming or whatever it is, remember that yes, it's fun, anybody can do it, but not everybody has the discipline to just stick uh, to it and just persevere and grind and put in the work. It's a lot of sacrifice. Um, but if you want it, you can have it. It's there. You just got to go take it. I promise you. I want to stay, but I have to uh, do essays. <laughs> I'm saying, well, Leo, if you got to do essays, you got to do essays, man. You got you to gotta study. You got to study. You got to do what you got to do. I, regardless whether you decide to stay or go, um, I thank you for the time that you have given me uh, throughout this past uh, hour, almost uh, 52 minutes. Uh, just so you know, we're going to probably kind of like cap it off at around the hour mark. Uh, so if you have any last questions, make sure you start dropping uh, those in the chat so we can definitely answer your questions. So um, before I go, I definitely want to give you my thoughts on the Super 73 uh, bike that I just rode, but I want to make sure that I answer some of these questions. Da -da -da. We talked about the music video. We talked about the link. Uh, <laughs> Overlord, call me the director. Uh, your readers have always been very helpful. Abby, I'm glad uh, I'm glad that they've helped a ton. I'm going to challenge myself to do videos uh, in black and white to learn. That's awesome. And learn. That's awesome, man. Uh, looking forward to that. Uh, you're not located near Seattle or Vancouver, are you? Heading to there in mid-May, figured I asked. No, but I was just in Seattle recently. I was on tour with my band, so um, I fell in love with Seattle. I love Seattle. I'm probably going to go back there. Um, to film and just to you know visit, but uh, I am from I, I live right now in Southern California, uh, LA County, a little bit further east. Technical lens question: If I go for the anamorphic lens for a movie, that's Alan asking. I stick with uh, that lens for the entire movie when filming actors, right? Yes and no. If you want everything to be consistent, why not? But. Do not limit your uh, uh, filmmaking vision just because you have the one lens. For this music video that I filmed, uh, I switched between the anamorphic and then I also use a telephoto 58 millimeter, which is also uh, right here. It's awesome, I love it. And I also have a Sandmark uh, lens. I didn't have the Sandmark when I filmed, um, so I used a 58 millimeter uh, moment lens, uh, which is awesome. Sandmark also has a 58 millimeter, which is also fantastic. They're both honestly relatively similar in terms of like the quality that I output. Uh, so it all comes down to uh, the case and all the accessories. But honestly, uh, you, there's no rules. You can do whatever you need to do. The focal length that you need, uh, switch out that lens and get it going. Make sure your color is consistent and your frame rates are consistent and your overall movement is consistent. That's what's going to pretty much... Uh, put your film or your footage to the test, just making sure that everything looks uh, uh, similar to the clip before and the clip after. Uh, but yeah, that's just use your anamorphic, go ahead and use your um, uh, telephoto or wide. And if you want those black bars, slap some black bars on top just to make sure everything stays within those. Account for those. So if you're gonna add some uh, you know, extra letterboxing after the fact, you can't film like this because if I had letterboxing right here, it's gonna cut my, my forehead. So you gotta make sure that, hey, okay, I'm gonna account for that letterboxing. Let me go take a step or two back so that way if I add letterboxing, I'm getting what I need to get. Um, just keep your mind, uh, 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 focus on that because if not, you're gonna lose valuable footage, you're gonna waste your time and you don't wanna do that. So if you're gonna flip flop between different lenses, just make sure that you're accounting for that letterbox because unless you crop and just lose the sides, your anamorphic footage is always gonna have bars top and bottom because it's going to stretch the image so think about that all righty consistency and willpower those are the hardest for me when it comes down to food man i love food but i've been going to the gym consistently just to make sure that i can eat what i want to eat <laughs> honestly because i love to eat i love food and thanks old chap <laughs> no alan that's the point man you can ask your way no problem just want to thank you for all you do, uh, Stan Cook. Thank you so much, Stan. I, I, I do this because I love it and because you guys give me the validation. You guys say, okay, you're enjoying it. You're getting out of it. You're getting something out of it. Um, that is 
my reward. That is how I continue. And of course, um, your views, your time supports my channel. And every time, uh, just out of full transparency, every time you guys pick up anything in the links, it helps keeps, uh, keep my Wi-Fi running or keep the lights on in terms of like the channel, right? Uh, I can invest by other things, answer questions, go out on location film. So thank you so much. It really means the world that I, I, I can do what I love and you guys allow me to do that. So let's go ahead and do the final round of questions over here. DHT, well, I'm going in May. If you get bored during that time, we'd love to collaborate on a blog. Yeah, that would be awesome. Absolutely. No problem. Sweet. So, um... Feel free to drop any questions uh, before we wrap it up. We're going to do one more round. We got uh, about 15 minutes in to the stream, but I want to share my thoughts on the Super 73 bike. That's That's been the highlight so far for me. The fact that I was able to ride one of those. I always saw Nystad doing it. I saw uh, I Justine running the bikes. I'm like, man, I want to ride those bikes. I want one of those bikes. I wish I could get the opportunity, and I got the opportunity the other day to try it, and Whew, the most fun I've had in a long time. So they haven't paid me to do this. Um, uh, I just honestly feel very, very strong about um, what they do as a company and you know the, the type of uh, bikes that they do. So you'll see more videos coming soon of the Super 73. I've been trying to clean stuff up and trying to convince my wife because I'm gonna buy one. I'm gonna get one of those soon. Having said that, if anybody has ever thought of getting one, uh, they gave me... 10% coupon codes. So if you ever get a bike, then make sure you use one of these codes because you'll save money. Um, but man, I uploaded one of the uh, DJI Osmo Pocket test videos. It's kind of like just a silent type of thing with me just riding the bike. I almost fell at the end. Um, but that's up in the channel. And then I'm going to have a vlog for Smooth, sponsored by Smooth, coming up soon with the Smooth uh, uh, and the uh, pretty much just the overall experience of me riding one of those and getting to see the warehouse and getting to meet their marketing uh, people and, and Taylor, right, who's handling all that stuff. So it's a f overall a fun time. And then, of course, I have a Moza Mini Me uh, B-roll section where I'm going to be using some of the footage that I captured of the Super 73 bikes with the Moza Mini Me. And then uh, I'm going to do a little tutorial, a little editing, little editing workflow soon. Not 100% sure exactly when because I have couple videos on the on the whiteboard that I have to finish um, but it's coming soon but definitely anything that you have seen on my videos whether it's a pocket whether are the moment lenses I put everything on the links of said videos I do have an idea list on Amazon that kind of like highlights and organizes everything for the Osmo pocket for the DJI Osmo mobile free vision everything um, so every, if you ever feel like checking that out for your own needs, um, I have those in pretty much every description of every single video. And of course, out of transparency, every time you purchase something out of those links, it helps the channel. All right, before we start wrapping it up, tu -tu 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 -tu, Leo says, thanks again, EMT, Y Sports, and shared in this community. I love it. You created that. Remember it. <sighs> Man, keep pushing it. I'm out. Thank you so much, Leo. Have fun. Uh, hope everything goes well with school. Once again, guys, thank you, thank you, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for taking your time and supporting the channel. Uh, if I didn't get to your question or you have more, feel free to DM me on Instagram. You can find me as EMT Films over there. Remember that I also have a podcast. I have the audio version of pretty much every video that I have over here. So if you search on your podcast for EMT Films or Crop Factor, that's the name of the podcast, You'll be able to find it, give it a listen, let me know what you think. And uh, as always, thank you, thank you, thank you, honestly, for sharing your time with me. You could be doing so many other things and you chose to hang out with me and that means the world to me. Thank you so much, guys. We're gonna wrap it up. Uh, but remember, keep pushing. You can have it. All you gotta do is put in the time, put in the effort, and everything is, uh, everything is uh, beautiful. Everything is awesome when you put in the work and you, and you uh, set your mind to it, so. Thank you so much, guys. Have a wonderful week. Uh, we'll do this more often, I promise, uh, and get to me on the Instagram. We'll, we'll see you later. Take care.